Hey you guys, welcome back to another recap and reaction. My final one for Love is Blind season six. Thank y'all so much for clicking on this video. Let's get into it. So the last episode, right, left us with a cliffhanger. Jimmy asked Chelsea, how do you feel about where we're at? Do you actually plan to marry me? And she shares how she feels and that she's going to. What proceeded to happen next was a shock, but it wasn't a shock. But it was a shock, okay? Because Jimmy proceeds to tell her that he's not going to marry her. That he will not be at the altar. I figured this was coming, right? Um, but I just didn't think it was coming at the moment it came. Um, like, they just spent the last couple of days preparing for the wedding. With the dresses, with family coming in, friends, picking out ice sculptures, spending a whole day together at the amusement park just for the day to end with I'm sorry I can't marry you like that is blowing my mind it's not okay well you're condensing it down to one argument but it's like five or six really big issues that like really hit home and hurt my feelings I told you out of confidence about one of my friends understandably so Chelsea is upset okay and she I feel like this moment she was, like, I know she was upset, but she proceeds to tell him that, you know, I've been through a lot because of you. Um, I've had to walk on eggshells around you. And I definitely feel like there was a bit of projecting because I don't feel like she had to walk around eggshells with Jimmy. So they proceeded to rehash some of the arguments that they've gotten into. And they got really stuck on what was said, what wasn't said, how this person, how they felt. Like it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. And at the end of the day, it just seemed like the last confrontation they had was what broke the camel's back for Jimmy. Again, it's unfortunate. Like, I didn't think they were a match from the get-go. I was hopeful that they could work past their issues, the insecurity, um, but it just wasn't meant to be. This was quite a way to start the episode. The remaining brides are celebrating their upcoming nuptials. Spirits are high. Everything seems to be great. The guys' bachelor party was a bit more tame than what I thought it would be. Like, I'm like 2% scared, like barely. But I'm scared that like once you're actually present in the moment, one hundred percent feeling you feel 98% yes. I'm it's right. really wild, man. Just me and you, like... That was crazy. I like I, I like I don't even have words to say like my emotions and like how I feel towards this moment. The big day arrives for AD, right? And she's excited. She's beautiful. Her mother has met Clay's mother, and her mother even says that she's happy for the uh, family that she's marrying into, right? The support that she's marrying into. Everything seems to be copacetic until it wasn't. When you get married and commit to face your life together as husband and wife, or will you walk away forever? I do. I don't think it's responsible for me to say I do. Now, I know I am catching up. 
right? And finally caught up. But I promise y'all, I had no idea that Clay would be the one to say, I don't. I can't. I'm not ready. I didn't think he would be the one. But up until this point, it seemed like every step of the way, he was voicing to AD, I don't know. I want to be there for you, but I don't know. Despite all of the advice, support, um, encouragement from his mother, her mother, AD, and in his father's own way, encouragement as well, that wasn't enough to dispel all of that anxiety and fear, um, that baggage that he was carrying. Her family looked so shocked. They looked so heartbroken. I couldn't help but feel that his mother knew what he was going to say. Maybe she didn't know he was going to say no, but she was ready for him to say no, if that makes sense. I get to this point and think that you need to be forced with the I do. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's what's in here. And if you're not 100% sure here, don't ever cross that line. I don't want to, like, bash him, y'all, because I love this man, but I just don't want to him for you. There was a conversation that took place after the um, disengagement between Clay's parents, and it was such a real moment between two people that has shared so much that love Clay, their son, um, want the best for him, and understood the history, the context of why he made the decision that he made. He wants to be in a long-term relationship. He wants that. Tell me somebody like you. Huh? I met you, you know, tell me somebody like his mom. Yeah, but you met me, but you wasn't good to me. Okay? So, we won't talk about that anymore. <laughs> to segue a little bit, I did end up watching the reunion, and I wasn't surprised to see that Clay and AD were not together. She warned him that if he said no, she would be okay. But she couldn't see herself continuing to pursue a relationship with him, right? Um, he definitely shared a lot on stage and it seemed like he continued he continued to work on, you know, the things that he needed to work on. Um, but he expressed that AD was uh, the love of his life. AD mom said it best. She said that I can't be taking on my parents' stuff. I got to do what's good for me. And that's the reason why I took that approach to go to therapy so I could stop, you know, wearing, you know, the baggage that my parents left me and, you know, go my own way. So to backtrack a little bit, when I saw how long AD and Clay's part of the episode took, I figured <laughs> that Amy and Johnny would both be saying I do, right? And they did. My wife. I found my partner. I found her. I didn't think I was going to ever find her at all. And now I'm married. <laughs> Mrs. McIntyre. Oh. Mrs. McIntyre. Mm, that's a nice ring to it. <laughs> they were both really solid throughout this entire process. I did get a little bit concerned that the whole contraceptive uh, family planning um, situation was going to be an issue, but they really took time to hear each other out. 
uh, do their research and give understanding to where the other stood about the subject and they worked through it. Y'all know from the beginning I said that I couldn't see them together but they really seem to make each other happy and hopefully they will have many very happy happy years together. To touch on the reunion a little bit some of the highlights for me was one hearing about Trevor having a whole nother woman that was waiting on him to get back from the show. You were texting her as you were traveling here and as soon as you left the pods. We actually have the text, so let's go ahead and take a look. Show the receipts. I love you so much, honey. I'm excited for it, but more excited to get back to you after and start our life together. She responded with, did you land? Trevor responded, just did. He looks so embarrassed and guilty and it took him so long to explain himself. It was dead silent while people waited for an explanation. It was actually hard to watch. Like, I found myself like... Like, I had never seen this look, this demeanor on him before, right? Um... Nah, say it with your chest. <laughs> Don't get quiet now. Don't get quiet yeah. now. <laughs> and to think that he had a whole situation, relationship, whatever you want to call it, with another woman and wanted Chelsea to explain why she didn't pick him. And maybe he did really end up liking her, right? Like maybe he really felt some type of way about her not picking him because he liked her. I don't know, but he definitely blew any chance of a relationship with her after it came out about what he did. I won't spend a whole bunch of time on the whole Jeremy, Sarah Ann, and um, Laura situation. Again, they could have gone about things maybe in a different way. Not maybe, they could have. Um, but hindsight 2020, okay? You live and you learn. I, <laughs> it was good to see that they apologized. Again, they apologized. But Laura, Laura gave zero Fs, okay? Nada. They were not getting zilch from Laura in accepting what they were putting out. Okay, and it definitely seemed like they were the villains of the night. <sighs> yeah, they definitely, you know, Trevor was in his own hot seat, but they definitely had a seat of their own um, when it came to, you know, the their peers grilling them about what transpired. My real life, my 96 year old grandmother had a flight to my wedding. And within days, he was with you. First of all, Sarah, and you've had a year to reach out to me. Like we had that little Lake Day party. Half that conversation felt like you were asking me for advice on your new relationship with him. Last but not least, y'all know Kenneth and Brittany were like my initial couple I thought was gonna make it to happy matrimony okay and they didn't it was good to see that they seemed to be on good terms with each other but I couldn't wait to hear Nick ask um what he did to Kenneth I wasn't the only one with the perception that Kenneth seemed kind of indifferent about the way things ended right i can own right how the perception is um one thing i think is important to bring to the space is everyone processes differently i know most times you see like the emotionalism come in that was there doesn't happen at that moment and so when people say like oh he just he just didn't care like no and that actually was not the case i called clay like 
in shambles. Like, bro, can't, this is what happened to me. You know what I'm saying? So I think that I can understand how it looks, but everyone's different. What a season. I still can't believe only one couple made it to the end. Um, but that's still one more set of individuals that have found love in the here and now and shows that love is blind. That's a wrap, y'all. Thank you so much for bearing with me with these sporadic uploads. Um, I definitely wanted to bring something a little different, switch it up for you guys. If you're new here, I watch pretty much anything and everything from K-dramas to paranormal shows to uh, documentaries. I love me a good documentary. And let's not forget anime. But I wanted to switch it up and diversify uh, what I'm talking about on the channel. Hopefully you all enjoyed um, my <laughs> recap and reactions for this season of Love is Blind. If you feel so inclined, leave me a like, uh, some hearts in the comments, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Until next time, be safe, be blessed, and I'll see you later.